There you go. What do you guys think of that? Does that work? See, it's kind of weird because I got I got that, and then I have that. So I'm feeling really Canadian today. <laughs> so today it's episode 45, and it is Kristen McNabb. Actually, I got it on Amazon, and uh, it was a whopping six dollars. I thought it was money well spent. <laughs> Although, I'll be honest with you, it's not that thick. Like, I could... I'm sure I could blow a candle out with this thing. What's going on, Kieran? What do you think of my mask? I'll tell you what. Kieran, I'll send you one of these if you send me a Bahamian one. How's that? You're from Bahamas, right? I think. I think so. I'm still waiting to get you on, my friend. I want to get you on one of these uh, upcoming Rattler vlogs. So, let's go live now to tonight's special guest. And I think she might be joining us from where it is 10.30 p.m., I believe. Kristen McNabb. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm going to uh, actually I'll get you to tilt your camera up a little bit because you got a bunch of words right in front of your face there. Other way. <laughs> Perfect, right there. That's good. That's good. That's good. Wow, how are you? It's are are you uh, are you out east right now? No, I actually uh, moved to Grand Prairie yesterday. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I started a new job there today. So I'm on a radio station there called Big Country ninety three something something something. Oh, how <laughs> so, so you'll have to you'll have to listen to me. How bad is that? When I don't even know the name of the radio station that I'm on there, but oh well. Ah, well, welcome back to Alberta. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, good. So you've been uh, in, I guess, Halifax for quite some time, then. Yeah, for about two years. I came back home last weekend. So good for you. Well, yeah. I I hope you're happy to be back. I am. Good, good for you. Good for you. All right, everybody. Kristen McNabb was with the uh, Rattlers women's basketball team for two years from 2013 to 2015. Uh, that was an interesting time for the team. And uh, we'll talk more about that coming up in just a bit. But uh, Kristen, I, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to give you the toughest question right off the bat. So let's start off that way. Um, the biggest thing in sports today uh, is that all sports are canceled today. Uh, and it's a pretty contentious issue. Do you view sports as an escape from reality for fans and, and, and spectators? Or do you view it as a bona fide platform for political or social uh, uh, issues to, you know, like as a platform? What's your take on what's going on in sports today? I think it's definitely a platform like people look up to these athletes and if it's something they believe in they need to be able to use all the means they can to promote change and I think that's really important and I think it's a great to use what they can and hopefully get through to a few more people who maybe might not know what's going on and really force people to take that time that maybe they were going to watch sports maybe they can now use it to go learn something new okay that's a, it's a, hey, that's a great comment. I mean, some people are like, you know what? I life is tough these days, and I I need an escape, right? I mean, it's either drinking or watching sports, or sometimes combining the two. <laughs> but uh, you know, I mean, you can't you can't have your head in the sand from reality. Yeah. And yeah. I get what you're saying there. That's good. Uh, so you're you're from Cochrane. Uh, yeah. is, is that is that your hometown? Um, I live in I lived in Calgary, but I went to high school in Cochrane. Really? So you must have been from like the far west end of Calgary then? Yeah, or? and my dad was a teacher uh, in Cochrane, so I used to just go out with him, and I went to the school that he taught at. Gotcha. Now, is it true that you went from a high school team called the Cobras? <laughs> to a college team called the Rattlers. Is that true? And if so, how does yeah, that happen? That's true. amazing. <laughs> and I'm absolutely terrified of snakes. So it's kind of funny, but. Even more strange. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've got one son that goes to McCoy here in town. Mm -hmm. 
And I've got another one that goes to Hat High. And when I talk about my high school days, uh, they seem absolutely amazed that my high school in Swift Current had an Olympic-sized swimming pool in it. Like, that was kind of the weird features of my high school. Tell me about Cochrane High School and something, something really interesting about that high school. Um, so in the gym, the back wall has two giant cobras painted on the wall. They cover the entire back wall. And I don't know, some people find it kind of interesting. I know um, Hat High used to come to our tournament. And uh, Jade, who played with me, she was like, yeah, we all were commenting on the snakes on the wall and stuff like that. So it, it sounds like an intimidation tactic for the opposition. <laughs> That's kind of what it sounds like. I don't know. They've been up there forever. So okay. they've, everything else in the gym except those have always stayed up. Right. Okay. So you got a spare or you've got like the lunch period. You want to get out of the school. Where do you walk to? Is there like a restaurant or a convenience store or like what, what is the, what's the, uh, you know, closest nearby place that, that the kids will go to there? Um, there's, there was like a little convenience store down the hill, but most people there had cars by grade 10 because it is serves a lot of places outside of the city. So lots of kids have their own cars. So most people would drive. Cochrane has grown a lot since I went to high school. So before it really had like one Tim Hortons and one McDonald's and that was where most people went, but they always have the train that runs through the town. So if anyone was late, they always set a train through. They got stuck on the other side of the track. Ah, uh, what kind of a teenager were you? Did you ever, I mean, it, it had to have been really tough to cut class when your dad was a teacher there. <laughs> I mean, that was pretty much impossible, right? What, yeah. uh, were, were you, did you have a rebellious streak in you or what were you like back in those days? Not really. I was always pretty busy. Like I played six sports while I was in high school. So there wasn't a lot of spare time and I did sports med for the football team. So I was always pretty busy. So I didn't really have like rebellious time. <laughs> And of course, that sports med, that kind of launched you in a way to later years in life, didn't it? Yeah, a bit. So I was really thinking physiotherapy when I was in high school. But the more in my undergrad, when I got to do like placements and job shadows, I really found that occupational therapy was more for me. So awesome. I just finished up. That's really exciting. So you, uh, after... Um, after Medicine at College, uh, you went to get your master's uh, at Dalhousie, I think. And we're, we'll, uh, we'll touch on that here uh, in just a second. But when you go from Cochrane to Medicine Hat and you're 18 or 19 years old, I mean, that must have been that must have felt like a, just an enormous distance away from home. Uh, how, how did you decide on Medicine Hat and what was that decision making process like? Um. So I actually didn't know there was a college in Medicine Hat when they recruited me. And I had been, we used to play in tournaments at Hat High and McCoy. And I knew um, the coach at McCoy and she had gotten Jason out to come watch. So I met with Jason when we were here on a tournament. And I don't know, I really liked him. I had visited some other schools, but I just really liked how he described the program and how the girls were super close. And that's, so, uh, and he just made me feel really comfortable. So that's kind of how I made my decision to come to Medicine Hat to play. Good. So two seasons here. Mm -hmm. uh, refresh your memory. Who were some of the, some of the key players on that team? And uh, who, do, who did you kind of develop the closest bond to during your time with the Rattlers then? I think our whole team was very close. Like we had Kennedy and Dragana and, Ali Julie, Sierra Masala, Jade Spruitt, uh, Courtney, Rose Deba. Those were kind of all the girls I started out with that play that I played both years with, and they mm -hmm. all were from. Most of them were from Medicine Hat, and then I lived with Dragana for those two years. So I feel like we were all really close. I still keep in contact with them today. And then there were girls who joined second year that I also keep in contact with regularly so that was a talented era of basketball <laughs> wasn't it like that that must mm -hmm. have been i mean i know 
when you're playing with uh, with players like that, I mean, you let them do their thing, and you realize that they're kind of the upper tier of talent on that team, and you know, it's your job to kind of support them, right? Is that kind of how you viewed it? Yeah. So I think coming from Cochrane, that was a big role adjustment because um, from Cochrane, we didn't really have a lot of basketball players like I was the only one that went on to play after high school so it was like really a leadership role there and then it, it was more of a learning experience mm -hmm. and um first year I played some and then by second year I was able like I didn't usually start but I would get to play half the game and that was just kind of where I wanted to be and really when I went in I wanted to do everything I could Exactly. Now, uh, I, I tried to do a little bit of research here, and I couldn't really find out for sure 100%, but were you on the team uh, when Megan Condor was on the Rattlers? No, so I, she came onto the team the year after I had left. Okay, sounds good. So, looking back to your team with the uh, Women's Rattlers basketball team, what, uh, were there any games that really stand out in your mind as just the, the, you know, the pinnacle of your time here? What games were those, and what, who, who might that have been against? Um, I found I always played really good in the Lethbridge gym, which was rare because most players didn't like to play there because Lethbridge was very, very good the years I played. Um, and I also liked playing in State's gym. Being from Calgary, Lethbridge, and State, my parents and family and friends could come watch, so it was always nice to play play there so I really liked playing against those teams mm -hmm. did you ever have an individual game where, where you had the the performance of your life or would you kind of have to go back to high school for that what, what yeah. would you say was there a was there a crucial three-pointer that you made or anything else as a rattler that stands out um I can't think of anything in particular I <laughs> did you ever know. get did, did you ever have to go to the line and you sunk both of them and you're like oh I'm so glad I did that. I can't think of any ones that I made, but I do remember first year I hadn't missed a foul shot all year. And then I got an and one and I missed it. And I was so upset. Ah, <laughs> dang it. Oh, well. All right. So what is happening with you career wise now? You uh, had indicated that uh, you've gone from Halifax to uh, Grand Prairie and uh, you're just getting settled in there right now. In fact, like your life is in boxes right now, I would imagine. Yeah. What yeah. Are, are you there for a career opportunity? Yeah, so I just took a job as an occupational therapist for the school board up here. So I started today, actually. Wow. So, yeah. so okay, so for the school board, then what, uh, I mean, I, I'm not really familiar with why a school board would need an occupational therapist like that. What, uh, what, what's your role going to be? So um, I'll work with, we'll get referrals from teachers for kids who have like behavioral issues or fine motor skill problems or handwriting or just any general sensory issues. And then we can go in and do further assessments and work with teachers and parents to give them extra strategies or equipment to really help them participate better in school. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, what is Grand, I've never been to Grand Prairie. What, what is it like there? And was this your first time there? Yeah. So I've only been here for about 24 hours, so I don't so, really know too much of what it's like. But so give me, give me a, give me a visual when you roll into town. What is it like, and how does it compare to Medicine Hat? Then it's, I find it actually like quite similar to Medicine Hat. It's similar in size. Um, I don't know. I haven't really seen much of it. Just the one main road, really. But I would imagine it's like forest all the way around. Is it? Yeah, pretty much. It's okay. Kind of driving to medicine hat but there's a few more trees <laughs> it's good it's good to know when i'm doing a radio show i can kind of visualize what it must be like there as i'm talking to everybody there so it's kind of it's yeah just, just hearing you talk about it that's uh that's good <laughs> now in looking at your instagram account and i hope everyone is uh following Kristen on uh, instagram by the way it is Kristen mcnab uh <laughs> women's basketball for two years uh it it looks like you had an absolute blast at Dalhousie in Halifax. So t tell me about the past couple of years and, and uh, what it was like, you know, academically and just the, 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 the non-academic side of living in that part of the world. Uh, I loved it there. Like uh, our program was 65 people and we were all quite close. So we got to plan lots of events to do together. And it's uh, a little different because then, uh, then going to U of C because Calgary is so 
big like you don't everyone doesn't live super close or so with Halifax everyone kind of lives like right near downtown like it's a walk to the water like I live 10 minutes from the harbor front so it's just nice you can go out and do stuff all the time the weather is generally quite a bit better so mm -hmm. it's great got to plan lots of events um I don't know there's so much to do there lots of hiking that okay, stuff, so. help me out with this. Help me out with this. Um, some people say, you know, the, in, down east in the Maritimes, and others say Atlantic Canada. Is the Maritimes and Atlantic Canada, is that the same thing, or is there a difference? So the Maritimes is just New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and PEI, and Atlantic Canada includes Newfoundland and Labrador. Okay, why, why, why are we excluding them? They're great people there. <laughs> what is the distinction there? I don't know. I guess maybe because, like, they're not attached by any roadways like the other three are. Okay. If you get to Newfoundland, you have to take a ferry. But I don't really know what, why they differentiate them. But... And then, of course, they all have their individual nicknames, right? I mean, if you're in, Hal in, your, if you're in uh, Nova Scotia, you're a blue noser. <laughs> I don't even know what a blue noser means. I've heard it before. It actually I've kind of sounds weird. <laughs> You've never heard that? Okay. All right. And did you ever go to – see, there's so much history in Halifax, and that's the part of it that I think I would love the most. Uh, I'd love learning about the Halifax explosion. Um, I've heard that there's a uh, – like, a t is there a Titanic museum or something there? Did I hear that? So they have the Maritime Museum, which has lots of stuff from the Titanic and from the Halifax explosion. Ah, did you experience a lot of the history? Because I'd be all over that. I would love that. Yeah, so I did go to the museums. And then also they have the big Citadel Hill Fort there that was built during the war. So you can go in there. It's like a national park and they have all the fort structures still up and they fire cannons still every day. Wait, who are we fighting? <laughs> I don't know. They just fire them for fun, I guess, now. And they have everyone dressed up in the original outfits. And they do, like, the marching and stuff, too. So They must have been fighting the New Brunswickers, right? Those dirty New Brunswickers. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no idea. All right. Once again, everybody, Kristen McNabb joining us right now. Uh, two more questions. Uh, first of all, what do you think that you got from your time in Medicine Had? When you look back on this era of your life, how did this help you and enrich you into the person you are today? Um, well, like the first thing I got was just like the greatest friends. Like I still talk to all of them all the time. Like, and I would move back to Medicine Hat in like one second if I had a job there. Wait, do we need an occupational <laughs> therapist here? I don't know. If I hear of anything, I'll let you know. Okay, sounds good. Good. Yeah, I, I loved it there. Like I just found everyone so nice, so friendly, and it was so easy to make friends there. And I just really felt like, uh, especially with our team, like it was such a strong sense of community mm -hmm. there. And it was so great like to have so many people come to games and support the team where I found some other cities, like the gyms are empty when teams are playing. Yep. And it's just not the same. And then I also think it gave me a lot of life skills because I had to live on my own at 18. So I had to learn a lot about how to balance school and basketball and getting your own groceries and what, what like that. So. Now, when you were a teenager in like middle school and high school, did your mom teach you to cook a few items and things? Or were you, was this like a whole new world and you had to figure out what you're going to eat and cook and everything else? Like how, how did you, how did you adjust in that way? Uh, my mom was pretty good about teaching me to cook and I could do a lot of it on my own when I had, left so it was pretty nice to already have to know how to do all that stuff and then everything else you just kind of figure it out or you call your mom and ask how to do something and i'm sure she, she sent a lot of care packages as well you'd get like a pan of lasagna or something right oh yeah she used to freeze like my portions of the dinner she would cook in containers and then the next time i went home i could bring them all back Ah, uh, moms, God bless them. That's great. All right, well, once again, Kristen McNabb joining us right now, and we always have a show-and-tell segment. Now, I understand that you're living in boxes and you haven't even really unpacked, 
But, you know, we've had some really weird stuff. I think someone just showed us a pair of shoes and someone else showed <laughs> us like a, a can of hairspray or something like that. So it could be literally anything okay, that, has, okay. that has a little bit of a story attached to it. What I do you got? I find one thing. It's really tiny. So this is our, it's my occupational therapy pin. And it's what they give you when they like welcome you into the profession. Okay. So in like our first week of school, we go and we like listen to a bunch of talks and they give out awards. And then the second years who are the year ahead of us, they pin one pin on every first year to welcome them into the profession of OT. Good. So what does that mean to you? It's like a big sense of, of accomplishment, right? You finally did it after all this work and moving across the country and missing your family and everything else there. It's kind of a good trophy to have, right? Yeah. And it's just nice like to have that ritual because then we got to do it for the first years when I was in second year. So you really get to like pass it on and keep it going, which I think is a great tradition. Excellent. I love it. Well, hey, Kristen, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here tonight. Congratulations on your new job and, and your amazing career. Uh, I know it, uh, it takes a lot of work uh, to, to get your master's the way you did, and uh, it's not easy. But uh, you know what? We're proud of you. We look back in your era here with a lot of pride as far as the Rattlers go. That was just an exciting time uh, to be a Rattlers fan. And, of course, you were uh, a big part of that. So thanks for hanging out here tonight with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, finally, who should we get in an upcoming Rattler vlog? We've had, we've had your friends, Dragana. We've had Jade. Uh, it could be a coach. It, could be, it doesn't even have to be a teammate. It could be one of the guys on the guys' basketball team or whatever. Give us a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could see if you could get Ali Julie or Sierra Matsala. I don't know if you've had either of them yet. Ne but... Neither of them. Those are great suggestions. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Congrats again. Yeah, thank you. All right, there she goes, Kristen McNabb, Rattlers women's basketball for two seasons uh, with the uh, ladies' uh, Rattlers team. All right, guys, thanks for watching tonight. Have a great night. We're back again. Nothing tomorrow. I got stuff going on. We'll be back Monday. Monday is the next Rattler vlog. So on behalf of Kristen, thanks for watching. Have a safe weekend and a great rest of your summer, and we'll talk to you Monday. All right.